Hello again, this is uh, Machine Learning Prospects and Applications. We are in Berlin in office of Yandex and we have Andres Brown here who is the head of Global Data and Analytics in Allianz. So thanks for coming, thanks a lot. You're welcome. It is a well, I think it's a huge event in the sense that there are a lot of different topics and you can hear starting from very theoretical talks, finishing with very applied and of course uh, we will talk even more applied tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. Out of your experience as a person who hires maybe uh, people who work in data analysis and data analysis is a, big, is a big thing, everybody wants to be in data analysis now. What competences do you feel are important for this field? Well, what's really important is the combination of analytical uh, capability and skills and the technical capabilities because uh, data science alone, for instance, is, is, uh, is, is something that needs to be applied. So you need to have technical and IT technical software engineering capabilities to, to apply that in a, in a bigger e uh, company e ecosystem. And what's also needed is um, uh, some functional knowledge about or understanding about businesses and how this works, because otherwise it's just up in the air. It doesn't really um, uh, deliver value. Yeah, we, we've been talking with uh, Professor Lee Deng recently mm -hmm. and we were discussing um, this issue of brute force mm -hmm. um, because he's apparently a big fan of brute force. <laughs> of course, when we're talking about big company uh, like uh, Allianz, for example, I bet that every big company can have enough computational power in a sense mm -hmm. that even uh, quite simplistic technology could be good enough could be boosted on a certain level if, if the computational power is um, strong. So how do you, like, do you look for a balance between that? Because obviously uh, <coughs> computational power is costly, so, but at, at the same time great minds are also costly. So, like, how yeah. do you balance it? I, I'm not sure if I agree that you can ever solve every problem with brute force and also brute force needs to be managed. So if even Allianz maintains a pretty bit, big Hadoop based uh, ecosystem on cluster and and that needs to be managed and you can't really scale uh, endlessly if you're a normal company you have to manage these significant IT system you have network issues you have uh, many many problems and that you have to manage so you have to have clever people and also you have to keep up with latest technology and analytical skills so uh, what we see is certainly technology delivers uh, helps to deliver better results if you have brute force or lots of compute power and better technology uh, is, is, is always useful, or but what we see mainly is it eases the work of the data scientist. Like upcoming tools like Spark are more useful and easier for a data scientist to use than old school MapReduce in, in Hadoop. So that's one example where the better technology helps a data scientist. I don't think a data scientist will be uh, unnecessary, unnecessary in the future. I even think it will be more important. And if you uh, tackle hard problems like uh, practically hard problems, which for instance is fraud analytics, where you have to, uh, we do a lot of fraud analytics obviously, and we always have this problem, you have very little fraud and you have this, this algorithm that is some 97 or something percent accurate, so how do you deal with false positives for instance, because you always have to investigate all these a uh, huge amount of false positives and then if a human looks at that it's obviously no fraud. So th th this really goes into the analytics, into better machine learning, into better data scientists. And there's, I see no way that more compute power would help us. Essentially like wh who are you are more interested in, in people who are technical people who can uh, give you better technical solutions or in people say who are analytical people developing new models mm -hmm. uh, or the developers who are somewhere in the middle. Yeah. How do you balance this in the team? We, we, we hire all of them and uh, our data scientists typically work in what we call agile self-contained teams. So while the data scientist on such a team would own their use case and try to understand the data available, try to understand the business use and the potential impact of what is to be delivered, um, the team is a, is a, is a self-contained team having software engineers or big data engineers, Hadoop or big data experts. Actually, Hadoop is not so important anymore. There's more technologies coming. Uh, we even have designers who, who um, think about information visualization and making data acceptable, uh, uh, understandable and, and uh, accessible to others outside the team who are not really deep into technology or data science. Yeah, machine learning is uh, quite often considered as a black box in a sense that mm. it's not not very well interpretable and at the same time they're always a person who who's maybe a manager or middle top manager and so on I don't know the person who makes decisions doesn't always uh, have 
you know, faith in machine learning, especially as long as nobody could explain to him what, uh, what, what did it exactly do with the data. Mm -hmm. So how do companies like Allianz or generally mm -hmm. on the market reorganize the decision process when this new technology comes up and yeah. shows that, okay, apparently it's more effective than the human brain in some areas. Yeah. Well, well, that's pretty easy. We have, we have um, a couple of use cases where we use machine learning and new technology to replace existing uh, um, approaches and there we certainly have to compete with what is existing. Uh, companies like Allianz, like us, we have certainly lots of mathematicians and statisticians and we need to prove in an AB or ABC testing, for example, a model verification that what we do is actually correct, makes sense and is better than what we had before. And sometimes this testing is pretty complex. Uh, it, this really depends on the uh, potential impact if, if something would go wrong or if the machine and, um, would, would uh, deliver a wrong result. And we are also very, very interested in these results because we are not interested in, in, in providing something that doesn't work or is not better than what we had before. But what we see very often is uh, in these tests that uh, the machine learning approaches we have deliver consistently better uh, results than existing, um, especially statistical or even um, simple rule-based or complex rule-based approaches. So machine learning typically performs better. If not, then we have to look twice. But uh, in most of the, the relevant use cases, it performs better. Now with the biotech plus machine learning, you can much better understand the physical, uh, mental, I don't know, uh, the health conditions of a person for any insurance company this is a great source of data and on one hand, uh, hand but on the other hand there's uh, there is uh, um, the idea that this data should be protected because it's personal and sure. there are certain legislation all over so um, how do you see this future in which direction do you, do you believe this would develop and and um, um, do you see any possibility of uh, you like like uh, but for all these beautiful applications in a sense that machine learning can improve our health uh, do you do you believe that uh, this balance could be found I think, yeah that's a, that's a very relevant topic and we watch this very closely um, I think this basically goes back to to two questions beyond the obvious legal and 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 technical or mathematical machine learning questions whether it's actually possible or how good the results would be I think that would also improve but it goes back to two key questions one is um, is an ethical question uh, and that is do we want that for instance in health insurance and this alliance takes extremely serious so so um, I personally believe that um, to insure a person based on on for instance a DNA pattern or so is is ethically uh, very problematic mm -hmm. uh, and it number two is it goes beyond the original uh, purpose of insurance where you want to share risk amongst many people and, and then have a, a statistical uh, approach to that so that you uh, don't really disadvantage some because the ultimate effect would probably be that you cannot insure some people who happen to have a certain disease or may develop a disease later in their life and or you would only insure them at a very high cost and this is really ethically very tricky. So this is the insurance side of that. I believe that there needs to be some regulation around that and there's some ethics around that and um, if you look at data and its use, I think we all know that this now goes way beyond security. We have the privacy and ethics, data yeah. ethics questions and these Allianz takes extremely seriously and we are also willing to set higher standards for Allianz than probably the law would set. So that's one side of the coin. The other side of the, um, your question is, should we use that in science, for instance, in medicine to improve the life of people? And here my answer would be definitely yes. Uh, I believe, uh, to, to make a blunt statement, the, the cure against cancer will be never found if data is not used and leveraged to find that, to just say something bold. and. Um, and so there must be a huge difference if you apply that commercially in, for instance, a financial industry, financial sector like insurance. I think there is rather on the no side and there needs to be certain limits and very clear limits. But on the science side, I think there's a huge difference and we need to find in the future ways to, while maintaining the privacy and security of data, still doing science and improving the life of people and maybe ultimately finding the cure for cancer. There are applications and it's amazing where uh, machine learning already is. We mentioned health, we, 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 starting from space, finishing with the cells in our body, uh, machine learning is applied. Do you see any other areas um, a, a 
applied and very close to daily user or daily person where machine learning is about to come or is already coming? Well, I, th I, I think machine learning is already coming in many fields and, and will come in many more. And I think it's quite simple. The, the, the reason why machine learning would not be applied in an industrial or, or business context is typically why, because the data is not available. There's also in our company typically the challenge to get the data we would need to do that and, and that's a legal question, that's a data protection question, that's sometimes technical questions we have legacy systems or we just don't have enough data or others might not have enough data. So these are the limits and these slow the process down. Uh, if the data is available uh, and and we the, the data sets are big enough um, and useful, then machine learning is and will be applied or at least tested. And we see fields coming pretty recently, like one thing we use machine learning for is uh, cyber threat and all these things, which is easy because you have lots of data, log files of servers and so on. And, and we all understand that this is a growing risk and uh, the impact and the usefulness is big. And, and to your example, it uh, wouldn't be probably at the moment our thing, but as far as I know, also in traffic optimization, it is already be at least tested with some car manufacturers. What about the quality of data? That's another issue mm -hmm. that I think is big uh, for Allianz, and at least for, for every bank it's usually big. I've been talking with several bank people and they constantly say, we would love apply machine learning to this or that, but it's in, um, unbelievable how many mistakes are True. there in the data on the ground level. So, um, uh, how do you handle this kind of problems? Like, uh, do, first of all, is it a big problem for you and how you work with that? Well, it, 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 it is a challenge, especially if you look at old historical data and uh, the challenge in insurance is that some of the data is really old because some contracts, if you look for instance of life insurance contracts or such, they are very old sometimes. And uh, in some situations, especially with life insurance contracts, we just lack some data. It's not so much a data quality, yeah, is one thing, but we lack uh, some data to do what we want to do. But to be very honest, machine learning is there does much better than traditional methods. So it's, even with bad data or missing data, uh, machine learning combined with big data approaches uh, delivers consistently better results. So for instance, if you have lack, lacking data and you have uh, significant data sets like we have in, in Allianz obviously on, on, on historical data, then you can create graph representations of these data and then you find connections and you find a way through your lacking data and then machine learning run on that graph representation still delivers much better results than at least any other approach I would know at the moment. Yeah, so basically you feel the missing, uh, the missing exactly. bars or even correct them if you, yeah. if you see that this looks like an outlier, right? Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so maybe the last question that I, that I ask to everybody who's, uh, who we talk with is uh, your general impression of the event in several aspects. First, uh, the program, the scientific mm. part of it, and uh, at least what you saw so far, uh, and any suggestions on that? Well, the, the conference is, is, is very good because um, what's interesting, it goes much deeper on the machine learning side than most of the other events and that's, I think that's good because it brings the right people together and gets people excited and, and uh, I feel if we go home and I'm also here with a data scientist team, uh, they will be really excited to, to bring back this knowledge to the the rest of the team, so that's good, uh, it's a motivational thing. The other thing is very well organized, so that also is a beautiful spot here, beautiful location, It's uh, that also is, a, is good fun. Next year you have to work on the weather maybe, but otherwise... <laughs> we did our best, we did our best. All right, thank you very much Andreas, that was Andreas thank Brown you. from Allianz. Thanks a Thanks lot. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the next day of conference. Then. Bye bye. Thank you.